the crackdown on the Syrian protesters, it was brutal, it was uh, violent. They shot people in the streets, they uh, took wounded people, they killed them, they tortured them. And they put them in very inhumane conditions. A cell, which was supposed for one, it held 25 people. Nobody could lay down. They should all the time keep standing for four months. It was like hell for men. I, I was in detention. I, I saw that myself. And we documented all those sexual male violence, what's happening in Syria. Many stories I documented and I saw victims of torture, of male abuse. They tried to terrorize their people. When they take them to the detention center, they started by searching them in a so humiliated way. They really touch, touch their bodies and make them naked and uh, insert fingers in their anus. After this uh, stage, we have many kinds of sexual uh, torture. There was a, a victim who they were just uh, tidying his uh, penis and make him drink water and he needs to pee and he, he can't, he feel just a lot of pain in, uh, in their penis. We have one victim, uh, the security forces capture him and start to torture him and, uh, and uh, this guy have types of argument against the security forces so they cut his member so this affected him and his uh, physiology a lot and also affected uh, the society and this is the aim from the sexual violence actually another example they used to to insert some uh, some tools uh, metal tools uh, in the detainees anyways and uh, sometimes they enforce the detainees themselves to, to make sexual uh, movement with each, with each other. We found that sexual violence against men and boys happens in a variety of places, of contexts in Syria and Turkey. The vast majority of our findings were about sexual violence within Syrian government detention as a form of torture to humiliate and degrade. Also, house searches and checkpoints by Syrian government forces, pro-government militia. Sometimes they were, they were raping the wife or the, the children in front of uh, the, the husband or, or the father. And many times they just let them naked in front of each other and um, yeah, this is so humiliated. Turkey, we found that um, men and boys are experiencing and vulnerable to sexual violence during their forced displacement, so while crossing the border from Syria to Turkey, which is often irregularly through smuggling in the context of employment, so men and boys are quite vulnerable to exploitation within the workplace, particularly boys in the context of child labour. They are afraid from the shame. This kind of violence doesn't get attending because usually people don't like to talk about, uh, about this.
the sexual violence is so dangerous because it has many kind of impacts. It has a physical, a psychological, so, so, uh, sociological impact, and it's just that the victim carry the, the pain all the time. So this affecting them a lot, actually. I think they are living in terrible and horrible time. Mainly, they are isolated. There's an increased stigma when you're when you're talking about males and boys, and thus it's it's very difficult to actually get witnesses to be able to engage on this violation. We've heard reports from witnesses who who have been sexually violated that they've sort of completely separated from their family, that they've faced rejection from the community. There's rarely any kind of psychosocial or medical support for individuals who have gone through this experience. They just lost their ability to to have sex or their desire to to have uh, to have sex. So this um, affected survivors immensely and led to many psychological consequences. The feeling of hopelessness can affect anxiety and depressions, thoughts of self harm, thoughts of suicide. We did hear reports of male survivors of sexual violence dying by suicide, um, and also symptoms of post traumatic stress disorder. Nobody cares about them, no organization, no uh, psychologist to, to follow their cases and it's really needed uh, to do as urgent uh, help for this kind of uh, victims. Those people is the most vulnerable victims in the Syrian conflict. And rehabilitate them, it's a long process actually, and it's needed, it's, it's required and it's urgent. Particularly men aren't able to access services. Services are designed for women and children, and there aren't accessible entry points for men to be able to access services. Lots of victims, they told us why we a need to highlight what's happened to us or to speak. Nothing will happen. It was described that a man or boy who was subjected to sexual violence would never report it um, to a legal and justice system. And we found that there was um, non-existent safety and security for men and boys who were subjected to sexual violence. The provision of psychosocial services, the provision of medical services, both within prisons and without. Um, international organizations working with refugees, with victims of torture, should have these programs that are reflecting on this violation and aware of the context in which it happens. Almost there is no help for, for them and we have uh, to to really to get a tent on, on these victims because it's so risky on, not on them and their families but on all the Syrian communities.